Single or poly or ace, or hanging out with swingers back at your place. Listen to us as we give no fuck. On Tinder and Bumble and plenty of yucks. Trying and trying and having no luck. Because we all know dating kinda sucks. Are two of a kind. He says stupid shit and she doesn't mind. They're not doing this show to make any bucks. Life as a chicken whose feathers they pluck. Why does it work? Well, here is the crux. They both know. Dating kinda sucks. Dating kinda sucks. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Adam Ethevitable. This is the DKS Podcast, a podcast about love, sex, culture, and society. This week, we'll be talking about why it's important to set boundaries while you're using dating apps. Enjoy the show. And if you're watching us on YouTube, now's the time to like, subscribe, uh, turn on notifications so you can see every video in short that we come up with. And thank you for watching. Yay! I mean, I know we're recording before we have our live listener event, but I'm excited for that coming up on Thursday. And it's Tuesday right now, June 27th. It is, and I think it's funny that we're actually in the same town and we're recording in our separate areas, too. I mean... Wh- I, don't know what, I don't know what else we would do. You don't really have the space. You would come over to my life. house and say, I don't know, we just sit and talk. I mean, we, we could have done that. We but... could have, but I feel like we'd have to face our computers against each other and just like sit there like we're basically across from each other anyway, so you know, what's the point? And this way, I don't have to put on pants, so it works. It's a win-win. I feel that. I'm wearing... like workout shorts right now not dressed up so noticed yes Um, (laughs) okay (laughs) chill (laughs) uh so uh yeah i am uh, here in seattle i am coming off of my second week uh being here and um we have of course uh, by the time you hear this episode we will have already done the meetup that we had on thursday june 29th so if you're hearing this now you missed it shame on you if you live in seattle to it we're sad that you didn't make it but Hopefully it turns out okay and it will be a good event. I think it will be. I think it will um, be too. Looking forward to it. And uh, thank you again to the Graduate Hotel in Seattle for uh, taking the time to uh, to do that. Um, and then the, that episode, the live episode of recording, uh, will be going up uh, two weeks after that. So that way we have some material because somebody is leaving again. Says the person who's always traveling across the U.S. from now on. Don't even. Yet has managed to still always be available to record. So I don't want to say. But yes, you're going somewhere, right? Aren't you? I'm going to Maine. Yeah, back okay. to Maine with oh, Roy's family. Great. Back in the cabin. Yeah. At least we know we'll get a good story out of it. Uh... Oh, my God. It's Now that I know. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Now that I've been up there, I know what to expect. I think I'll be fine. We have a rental. We have a rental car this go around. We have an extra cabin that we're staying in. So we'll have even more alone time and more internet. (laughs) So I think it'll be fine. I wish, you know, what I do wish is I wish there was a, uh, like, like we had the ability to um, clip in like a year ago when you went last time and what I told you to do before you went, because you were going to be so annoyed otherwise. What did you tell me to do before? I I don't even remember. Rent a car. I was like, just spend the money on. Oh yeah, that was a that was a mistake. I promise you, and you're like, man, it's not worth the extra cost because I'm cheap and I don't want to spend money. And then the first thing you're like, wish I should have had a car. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we were just like tied to whatever everyone else wanted to do. So this go around, it was like his sister, myself, all of us agreed. The four like kids, you know, agreed. We're we're all split. We're splitting the car, and we'll. And yeah. you have a cabin you're going to for part of it, right? Or you're you're staying yep. some some there and some like a couple the nights one? there, then a couple nights in like the parents' cabin. Well, that'll be nice. I think that's so we can have a break. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And Wi-Fi is the other one have Wi-Fi in the uh, in the place. Yes, it'll have internet and it's closer to town. So yeah, great. We should be. I think we've solved the, all the problems. Yeah, we, we shall see. Shall we? <laughs> I we'll mean, see like it's still me. Yeah, we'll it's see still what, me. What else you'll. Uh, <laughs> Well, what else will happen? Um, but that's uh, that's that's great. Yeah. So we're we're you'll you'll be listening to the episode, um, the live episode, uh, a little late because it'll be kind of filling in while we try to get some extra content to uh, fill in when Sarah's gone. Um, don't share all of our secrets. You didn't need to share that. I know, right? They don't need to do all the behind <laughs> the scenes. And um, so yeah, so I so I've really loved Seattle so far. 
um i will say oh you do i didn't uh, yeah we didn't really talk about this much besides just we walked around and had what yeah some we had food lunch and, yeah. um i had uh it was really good it was delicious um and uh, i went and got a milkshake from the place which was really good I just walked a little bit around west seattle it was really beautiful um it didn't really like but no i've like really just loved the the weather and everything in the um, summer be yeah, clear in the summer, in the summer. yes yeah. like yeah which i mean but i'm fine in the cold like i love the cold weather too so i don't have a problem with that um but i was at a friend's place and he has a basement level mother-in-law's apartment that i was staying at and i had it, it overlooked their backyard or they had this big backyard lots of trees and just and i had the no air conditioning and i was fine me like i'm I, I need like things to be like cold and it was like literally a couple nights it was chilly enough that i had a blanket on when i went to bed and like i was amazed by that so i was like i could really see this area being like if i could survive summer i know winter's fine like i can handle winter i was like this wouldn't be a bad area and then so i was like i was really was like this could be an area i could see myself living in I wait what changed level. i'm i live too close is and that the then, problem you know and then <laughs> i went to a strip club Dun dun dun! Oh, the strip clubs aren't aren't up to your par. And I That's walked into the is. strip club, and I was my, my friends were doing a thing. I was like, I'm gonna go out for the night. I found one. It was like you know five minutes away. Walked in. It was exactly like I would expect. Dark, barely anybody there that early. It was like five in the afternoon. You know, nobody really there. Um, you can barely see when you walk in. Perfect. You know, whatever. I walk in, walk all the way to the bar, look at the bar, and all they have is Odules and core zero or something like that and a red bull and so all the non-alcoholic yes drinks. and there's nobody working there and one and there's one dancer who's just kind of like strolling around she comes up and says hi and i was like hey do they not have alcohol here and she said no not in seattle and then in washington state oh i was gonna say is that just a seattle issue or a washington state? state none of the strip clubs they're all dry by law you're actually in utah again i know like, <laughs> it's right. worse than utah i could get a fucking drink in utah like uh and, and so i was like oh, okay and so then i turned around and walked right back out i was like thank you very much and i left and i found a dive bar that was really cool i want to i want to uh, shout them out actually um they're in shoreline they're called woodies and they've been around since like 1923 and they have these really crazy hot dogs like uh they, they try all types of weird toppings the the cook like i actually makes up cool menus and they had one that was like, uh, you know, they had like a movie theater one they had that had like a, it had like pizza sauce with popcorn on it and mozzarella. And it was really good. And then uh, nice. I didn't try that one. It looked really good. And then uh, the one I tried was called um, like uh, the toucan. And it was, um, it was a hot dog wrapped in bacon with um, mac and cheese on top of it, covered in mac and cheese with Fruit Loops on top. And you would think that that sounds terrible, but I was like, I have to try. They wouldn't do this if it was awful. So what it turned out is Fruit Loops are really kind of light. You know, they're not really like, they're not really like strong flavored. So they're kind of just a citrusy, crunchy thing. So it's almost like having like a mac and cheese with like a little bit of lemon zest on it. You know, so like or a little bit of citrus, but zest. artificially, but, our, but yeah, but, you know, but so it's like crunchy lemon zest, basically. But it, but actually worked out really well. And it was delicious. So I want to shout that place out. So I ended up spending my entire evening there. It was definitely a lot cheaper than it would have been. And I think I just, how do you have a dry strip club? Like I don't, I don't understand. This is again news to me. I haven't yeah, well, been yeah, to a strip yeah. club yet. So you, you should have scouted it out ahead of time for me. You know, bitch, come on. <laughs> But uh, it was so, it really was. I, I was like that little gif of Grandpa Simpson walking into the bar um, that everybody's seen where like he walks in the bar, puts his hat on the thing, like sees Bart sitting behind the thing and then does a little turn, get, grabs his hat and walks right back out again. That's basically what I was like at the club. Because I, I, and it sounds weird, but I didn't want, I don't like, I like strip clubs because I like the, the dive bar environment. I want to go have a drink. Dark, a place. loud music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go have a drink at a place where there just happens to be a, a club there, a stage there. I don't want to go because there's a stage. And so that kind of ruins the entire, so like I'm not moving to Washington State now. That's it right there. Darn. I, just, I couldn't do it. I know. Yeah, I know you're disappointed. Were they, um, were they fully nude? I don't know. I didn't stay long enough to see. Oh. <laughs> I mean... Then maybe it wouldn't matter. Like that wouldn't like, you know, I Not, don't know. Yeah. You want to uh, drink at your, your local strip club. Is what I just want to have a drink and yes, and enjoy, enjoy a drink and chill and just be in an environment that I feel comfortable in. And that's, that's, that's really all it is. And so, um, yeah, cause I told, I think I've, I've, I've told the, the story about the Tampa club, right? The Mons Venus. Have I told this one? Um, I probably at some point over the last five years, God, but, I can't remember. So Mons Venus is, is one that's also dry. 
because they have different types of clubs in that area. They're either full nude, um, full contact dry, or they're like topless and you can have alcohol, but I had never been to that one. And someone recommended it. And I was with a friend of mine. Um, she'd never been. So we were like, Hey, let's just go check it out. So we go in there. It's like a Wednesday night. It's not that busy, but they, they didn't have a DJ at that time because it was their slow period. So they just have a jukebox. And so the dancers have to put quarters in for the, for their like eight quarters in for them to choose their two songs before their, before every song. And then otherwise they're just, the, it was actually pretty busy. There lots of guys sitting around us and lots of women dancing on them. But one one dancer forgot to put her coins in. So for like a moment, we're sitting there and we're sober because we were just going to stop in for a minute and then go actually go somewhere. It got completely dead quiet because she forgot to put her song, her quarters. in. so the songs just ended. And then in just the sound of the club, all you heard was just like the sound of like I do remember this naked okay. skin, just like grinding on denim. So just like this, you know, like the sound that just echoed like in stereo across the entire room. And it was just these, just all these old guys getting boners with the women, like, you know, oh yeah, it was, it was a terrible sound. It just like, I don't know even how to describe it. It's not like if you took a, if you like took a pair of wet jeans and then you just kind of slapped them against like a, like a deck, you know, you like, just like that sound, but just echoing throughout. So we left. And so I know I don't want to, I don't care if they're full of new, it doesn't really do anything for me. There. As long as you don't have that kind of sound going on yeah, so as long as you're and there's drunk, some alcohol, as long as you're too drunk to recognize it, I guess it's okay in that case. So anyways, uh, yes. So, uh, so I've really enjoyed Seattle. I've really enjoyed Washington. Um, but now I can't live here because of that. So um, until the law changes, that's it. I'm going to have to find somewhere else, I guess. Damn. Um, and, uh, and I would love to meet up with anybody while I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make more effort to meet up. Um, I'm going to be, you, I you know. barely have fucking left your place. I know. I know. I've been working no. and I, I'm done working. I don't want to leave. And, you know, it's just, it's been tough, but so hit Adam up if yes, you, you want to meet actually up like him. reach yeah. out. I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to act but I like, if you're, you know, if you're like, Hey, let's go out one night. I will go out at one night and meet people. I mean, and then the rest of the nights I won't do anything, you know, whatever, but I will do one, at least one night out. I'm going to be um, in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, that area, July 2nd through 9th. And then I'm going to be in Denver, July 10th through 17th, Tulsa, July 18th through 23rd. I'll be in Memphis for almost a month from July 23rd, to August 15th as well. And then I'll I'll give more dates later on as it gets closer. But so if you if you are in any of those areas and want to meet up and say hi, then please uh, feel free to feel free to reach out and and set it be like, hey, how about this time or something like that? Or if I'm in a hotel and you want to meet me in the hotel bar, I will totally do that. That's easy for me. Like I I can I can go out in my pajama shorts and meet you in the hotel bar. That, that's easy. So, Everyone's jumping at the bit to meet I up know, with you I now. You so really excited. sold that. So wow. excited, I know. <laughs> I'm just... I said, well, fuck this shit. <laughs> Hobo, what can I say? So anyways, that's uh, that's everything that's going on in my life. Um, what's uh, What else is going on? We talked about you going to Maine. What else? Uh, you, uh, have I don't else know. Going on? Nothing really is going on for me. I was traveling last week for work while you were in Seattle, so we missed a chance to hang but of out. Of course, the one time I come to Seattle, you managed to be gone again for a that's week. That's not my fault. That's not my fault. It's true. So, it's true. I was in Charleston for all of last week, which was nice, um, but it really sucks living in like the northwest corner of the United States because it's a long fucking flight to get anywhere on the East Coast. So it is. I don't really I don't really want to go to the East Coast again. And then I'm like, well, I'm going to Maine. So I'm going to the other corner of yeah, the you're US. making it. It's basically instead of going to like, I mean, the two furthest places you could probably go to would be Maine or Florida. And you're I know. Maine. Yeah. I know. And everyone's like, when are you coming back to Florida? I'm like, not in a fucking long time. I really don't right. want to sit on a like six hour flight. I'm good. Yeah, that's just not worth it. To Florida. No offense. But my, my dad, when he was flying from when he's been flying from uh, Salt Lake to Orlando, he's been doing it first class because he's just like, that's the only way he's willing to fly that long, be in, in a plane that long. And I was like, that makes sense. The life. I, I mean, I wish I could splurge on. I mean, I could, but I'm not going to. So you get for, travel miles. Like that. You could probably upgrade. There's all types. You, but I'm yeah. save. I'm saving those miles for an important trip. You know, going to Florida is just like I. I got to do it. You know. Right. I don't right. Know. That's true. Yeah, that's a good but, point. So, um, any uh, any uh, we're not. Here's the thing. You loved Charleston so much that we're not even going to get a what to see in it because it wasn't even worth your time. That's not true. That's <laughs> not true at all. <laughs> No, I haven't put together a what to see for it. Actually, I was kind of disappointed in myself when I was telling my coworker. I was like, damn, I didn't even shoot any content while I was there. Like we went to some really nice restaurants. I walked around my first afternoon there. 
didn't take any fucking videos really? or anything. Yeah. It's just, unlike you. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I was just like work mode for most of it. And just knowing that I had to be super, I don't know, spending all my energy in an office versus, I don't know. It's just, it's different, obviously, yeah. being in an office versus just turning off your Zoom and going, well, I'm going to go to the fridge and have a cheese stick or oh, that's me. But, you know, um, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Right. Well, that's okay. That's uh, I know. I feel it's like nice. I, that's it's, how I that's how I live my life, and, and it's fantastic. I'm just normally not like that. I don't know, but it was funny because you're always like, "Well, what do you want to do when you're in Seattle?" And I'm like, "I have no like desire really to like. I'll, if I, there's something I really want to do, I guess I'll go do it." But you know, I I don't know. I don't like doing touristy things. You know, I, I it's just, it's hard. I I think I'd have to be somewhere for like at least a month for me to really be ready to go out and explore an area. So I, I I don't know. It's I, I can appreciate not doing anything for for a bit. Yeah. So that's why I don't really have much to talk about because I'm just boring as shit right now. So just so, keep my head down, working, looking forward to our live event, and uh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that that will be fun. Well, let's um let's do this. Let's take a quick break and then come back uh, with the rest of this part. Um, and then uh, and then we'll get get into more in, in a minute. I know Adam mentions it every single episode. Stop your car right now. What are you doing? Call, text the hotline, give us some content. So it's going to be me right now saying, stop your car, pull off to the side of the road and call the DKS hotline at 407-519-0181. Any questions, comments, concerns that you have going on in your life and you just want some advice from both Adam and myself, we can help you out with that. Um, we did actually get, speaking of you traveling across the U.S. and being mm -hmm. exciting at the hotel bars and whatnot, right. um, a long time ago, you were talking about which cities you were going to decide to move to. And we got a text from the hotline saying, Tulsa all the way, great people, good food, and lots of good concerts. Because you're between... Uh, right. I don't, I don't know how much detail I had said on the uh, on air about that. Uh, I, I don't remember what, what we talked about. But yeah, you haven't Tulsa talked more a, about it. Yeah. 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 Um, Tulsa was one of my considerations. Now, let's just break that down. And, and you, you knowing me, let's go through all three of those things and see if and, and see, see what we talk about. Oh, my fucking God. You, you're so <laughs> lots, negative. Lots of, lots of good concerts. I mean, I don't, like, I don't I, like putting on pants. I don't like live music, first of all. So I just don't enjoy live music. The fuck um, you don't? Oh, my. Since not really. I, I, I went through a phase where I liked it when I first got divorced. And I realized that I had seen enough concerts and seen all my bucket list artists and i really just didn't enjoy it anymore yeah um fuck music he well, says well no no it's just like i mean if i'm at a bar and they're playing music that's great but i'm not i'm not gonna go to stand in a concert and be like yeah i just don't like big events anymore that's a big part of it too i think uh the pandemic ruined that okay so um, eh, not interested for for concerts then, at tulsa okay good food what do you what am i gonna say about that I'll just eat my fucking travel mayonnaise with whatever else I got lying around. So he doesn't give a fuck about food in Tulsa either. It was, it's only, it's just funny that I, because, because you were saying, um, you're like, Hey, do you want to go check out a restaurant in, in Seattle? I was like, I don't really care. Like, hey, you're I, like, whatever's easiest. Whatever's whatever, easiest. I just go to Subway. I don't need, like, I don't need to try out. You're like, yeah, but there's these restaurants you should check out. Like in Port, when I was in Portland, you were trying to get me to check out places. And I was like, eh. cause it's a foodie city. And you're like, I Oh, I don't really care about food. Yeah. Like if I could just... just take a pill and that'd be all my meals, that's what I want. I'm like, <laughs> okay, why are you even this fucking impression traveling? Of me is fantastic. But I mean, it's very true. <laughs> if I could just take a pill and it would just cover it and I wouldn't be hungry. Yeah, I would I would do that instead of going out to eat. Like it's just it's a waste of time and effort. But yes, so and great and then people. the last one, <laughs> great people. Yeah, you know I don't like people. You know at all. Like generally speaking, you know. So like yeah, you know I like a couple people, and that's really about it. I don't like it. So these, if you were these... in person, I would punch you. <laughs> I know. I just I just thought I, I just thought I would. What the fuck. <laughs> I just loved that everything they said. I was like, eh, it's not selling me. You know. But you're it, still gonna pick Tulsa. Um, I, I, I mean, yes, arguably I haven't made that full decision yet. I had something, uh, but, but it looks like Tulsa might be where I end up. I'm going to go spend five days there and visit there and really see if it's somewhere that I click with that I think I could, I could live. And then I'll be heading back down to Florida again. And then it's going to kind of decide, but I think Tulsa is right now top of my list. Um, but yes. So even, even despite, despite their very <laughs> enthusiastic <laughs> support of the, of the area, 
And I just thought it was funny because they're so enthusiastic and I appreciate them taking the time to text it. And then here I am just being like, I don't care about any of those things, but thank you. So, I don't so know. if you have anything to say about Tulsa, please call now 407-519-0181 and tell us how great Tulsa is so we can just keep giving the good vibes to Adam because he needs to stop being so fucking negative. <laughs> I'm so negative right now. I really am. <laughs> Um, but it, yeah, and we actually, so we're almost out of voicemails. We have one other voicemail left that we, we're going to do on another episode. So we would love to have, uh, some more voicemails from you guys. So please, yes. Like Sarah said, pull over, leave us a, give us a call. Um, you can send text too as well. Although calls are better because that way it's not us talking the entire time. We get to put your voice on there. And so please do so once again, 407-519-0181. And then we uh, we did end up uh, getting an email, and you can email us at dating kind of sucks podcast at gmail.com. And we got a recent email from Aaron that I wanted to uh, that we wanted to share. I'm actually going to let you read this, sir. So okay, cool. Go ahead well, and uh, take it up. All right. Um, so Aaron starts off by saying, "I just want to say thank you for how frankly and openly both of you talk about sex and relationships and life in general on your podcast. I grew up Mormon and just recently left the church, and I'm working on getting out of a toxic marriage." I've been binging episodes to help swing the pendulum of sexual repression the other way. It has just been so helpful to listen. Now I'm working on figuring out where on the swing I want to be. But I will say I did feel comfortable walking into a sex shop and talking to the employee honestly about what I was looking for. So thanks. Well, that's a pretty good uh, first step, uh, especially if you've grown up sexually repressed and have been in a sexually repressed marriage. Uh, walking in into a sex toy uh, shop and be able to talk to somebody about it. That's, I mean, that's, that's pretty huge. That's what it's all about. I just feeling more comfortable in your own skin and figuring out what you want. I props to you, Aaron. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And I'm 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 happy to hear that we've managed to help just by us being kind of brutally honest about everything. Uh it made you made you realize that it's not the end of the world to have desires and wants and also just to sometimes, you know, be fucking crude and uh, you know, and talk about things. Like it's not it's not shameful and it shouldn't be shameful. And so that, that's fantastic. Um, and I'm glad that uh, we've been able to give you a little bit of help. And hopefully this is a big step for you. And next thing, uh, talking about swinging the pendulum, next thing, maybe one of those swings. Maybe that'll be a, one of the mm, next The things sex swing is what yes. she gets next at the sex store. Yeah. That sounds like a tongue twister. The sex I was store is the like... next thing to get at the sex store. <laughs> <laughs> it was like those S's there. But yeah, no. And I mean... This, I don't know, this just makes me really happy to hear um, because everyone's growing and learning. And I'm just, again, I'm just really happy for you, Aaron. <coughs> well, thank you very much, Aaron. Um, if you want to send us an email or if you have anything you'd like to say, you can send it to dating kind of sucks podcast at gmail.com. And once again, you can call the hotline at 407 519 0181. So before we wrap up this half of the episode, yes, it's only two halves of this episode because uh, because of time and we've got other things going on. We don't have a what to see this episode, but we will be back with another one in our next full episode. <coughs> so I have a little bit of just an interesting <laughs> update and I uh, thought, thought it would be kind of fun to share. Um, and it is about a um, person I, I went on a date with uh, back in, wow, 2018. 18 maybe 19 start of the podcast no it was not the start no, of the podcast. okay no, no, no it was no it must have been 2020 because it was it was post pandemic but pre uh before i left uh and we called her a little blt um because uh, uh because we went out and she like had a gi- ginormous blt that she devoured and she that's what she wanted to eat and i was like this is perfect um and so we had a, we had a good time and we stayed stayed friendly um after after a date she just decided to kind of pull back from dating completely for a while and then i ended up leaving and but we've, we've always stayed friendly we chat um relatively consistently and even had tentative plans when uh for her to maybe come out to utah while i was there that it didn't didn't work out for a variety of logistical reasons but we've always been uh you know stayed stayed i would say relatively close and then i enjoyed talking to her and uh, we have a, we have a good kind of a good connection um and so she um she re- she recently started talking to this this guy a new guy and took him to nude night which is the um it's like the the sex art the sex art show that or the art show fo- fo- focus on sexuality nudity expression it's a pop-up art show in orlando and it's only pop- it pops up just for valentine's day weekend and it's been gone for several years 
and I had a piece that was exhibited in this. And I've had I've had one in every new night for the last like four years, five years. Uh, but well, last was, year was you last like front was and center. Yeah. Like, yeah, front and center entirely. Like it was just a giant 24 by 60 uh, you know, full frontal nude uh, photo that I was really proud of that, uh, that I had framed and then uh, had delivered there. I wasn't able to be there, but I told people that they should go check it out. So she went to check it out. And, uh, and like took selfies with it and sent them to me or whatever and brought this guy. And he also like, he took selfies with her or whatever. So then this guy that she had just started talking to, and was kind of a, like a new friend adds me on Instagram and then sends me a message with the photo and says, hi, and then he, you know, they all, he, he started listening to the podcast cause she had recommended it. Cause one thing she does is she recommends the podcast to everybody, which is always a big, love huge, her. Yeah, I love that. Um, and that was fine. It was very cool. You know, he was very nice, but then it just like continues to like, send me messages that are they're just like he sends me a screenshot of our mutual friends on facebook saying that he did a little light stalking and we have a bunch of people in common including like a cousin a cousin of his i went to high school with and so we chat for a little bit about things and it's it's just it's it's forced well it's it's not it's not like inherently awful like there's nothing like that i can point out and say this is weird it was the overall tone was just maybe too enthusiastic it was too like just I don't know, like to, hey, like me type of attitude or something like that. Something just kind of felt like, I don't know, like, I, you know, I, I, it was, it was weird. And so it just kind of started to rub me a little, the wrong way a little bit. Um, it started to feel like just a lot, like everything I'd said, he'd have like four replies and, and it was all, you know, like overly you're was, so great you're so awesome yeah so it was almost glad like a, to connect. a stranger heterosexual version of love bombing ah okay maybe the way to say it like but like friend bombing type of thing you know like and and it was it was interesting so i kind of pulled back and stopped replying and then and what were we the, what were you saying to him back oh I that's saw, cool I said, oh, that's cool though. thanks a lot blah, blah blah and then uh and then he said about the podcast i was like oh well you know we just he says that he has like a background and he's in, um in like you know um and psychiatry and things like that and he really appreciates what we're talking about addiction and everything and appreciates what we talk about and i was like oh you know we're just we're just two idiots just sharing what we think you know we're not doctors or anything so you know we want people to just take it with a grain of salt and so like i would reply back and you know just like and and, and try to be like kind of everything i said could be used as an ending of a conversation you know what i mean like it was just kind of ah, like, oh you. that's great yeah well this is the reason why okay cool <laughs> um, please stop messaging me but not I, saying I, that yeah yeah and, I, and like i said he wasn't it was just one of those things that gave me a weird feeling and it just felt kind of off so i stopped responding and he never replied again uh and so that, that was cool but um i, I reached out <laughs> to her and i and i said that. i was like hey you know so I got a bunch of messages from this guy. She goes, Oh yeah, he, he, he said he uh, really reached out to you. really liked you. And I was like, yeah, he kind of rubs me the wrong way. And he gives me some weird red flag, like possibly stalkery vibes. Uh, and if I get those, I can only imagine what it might be like with him. He seems like he might be a little possessive and a little bit like just clingy. So be careful with that. And she said, thanks. And said that, um, you know, that, that he, he was poly and so he didn't want monogamy. So she was okay with, you know, going out with him occasionally and everything and, um, and casually going out with him. But she also mentioned that he does seem to kind of like insert himself on like every occasion. Mm. And so uh, a few months go by and he worms his way into like exclusivity with her, uh, you know, which, which means obviously he was lying about being poly. Like, I think he was, just, I was going to say that was never a point in their I, conversation where I don't know if there was not, I wasn't, I wasn't a fly on the wall. I just know true. that they went from being poly to uh, like to him, you know, convincing her that they should just be monogamous, uh, which, which in my mind, means he was lying about it. Um, and so she, you know, just so she'd be like, Oh yeah, I'll go on a couple dates with you. And then when she sees that he's relatively harmless in those sense, you know, then it's like, Hey, why don't we just try monogamy? You know? And so I, I think yeah, that's my guess. Uh, so she got a little bit quiet um, and like I said, when, and, and, you know, didn't post as much, but then when she would post photos, he was always in there and on social media, stuff like that. But then this past week, she posted a group of photos that had like a concert and, and all of her friends were tactics and he was not in the photo or tagged in it. And I, I think I either laugh reacted to it or I recognized that. And she texted me almost immediately. And I was like, Oh, I see you noticed that. Uh, and yes, you were right about him. Damn. And, yeah, I know. And it turns out that he had jealousy issues. He wasn't nearly as nice as he was in the beginning. But the worst thing is that he used all of her vulnerability against her. Um, her, 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 like she, she's recently divorced and it has not been an easy, uh, it was not an easy situation. There's lots of things going on with it. Um, things that, that she actually even asked me back when we recorded not to talk about because she didn't want it somehow getting back to 
like there were acts like yeah, I don't know how it would have, but she just was afraid of it to that degree. Um, and at some point, uh, you know, you know, like the stuff that he did was not he was an awful person, but she had a lot of a lot of vulnerability about it. And so uh, this guy convinced her to open up, and they talked and they talked and talked, you know. And I think he came to her, you know, like oh, we'll just be friendly, and then it turned into a relationship. And then the first chance he got, whenever things didn't go his way, he started using that against her um, in manipulation emotional abuse uh etc and that that's you know i think that's awful um he also tried to get her to stop talking to me um by using that is a clear fucking sign if you're like yeah don't don't talk to adam anymore don't talk to any of your guy friends whether it's you or you know another guy friend right yeah and 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 he uh he basically was like oh did you hear the episode where he trashed libertarians and she, she considers a libertarian you know well obviously he's insulting you and what you're, you're gonna just be still be friends with him after that and she just laughed anything to like, drive a wedge yep basically i mean and it made it clear that he hadn't actually listened to the episode about she and i going out though because i feel like he would have had plenty of uh stuff to use uh, you know <laughs> use at that point um, I did not hold back. I think on that episode when we talked about what what happened, but um, like between she and I. But anyways, um, so you know she didn't waste too too much time. You know, maybe like six months or so. But like, just the worst part is that now she has to put all her walls back up again. Now she doesn't know when she can ever trust a guy again. And now she she never talked about it. And she was just like, like, how do I know when I can trust somebody again? Like, how do I know to be vulnerable and share these things that are important to me to share because they were part of you know, like you know the last you know, multiple years of my life um, and, and everything. And I said, I, I think you have to really let in a little bit of vulnerability, just a little bit, and then give it some time and see if it ever comes back to bite you. And if it doesn't, then maybe you can open up more, but she, you do have to have your walls up with people like this because they seem nice and everything, but then the, you know, the emotional abuse and the manipulation comes out of nowhere as soon as they're not getting their way. And I think that's why it's important to, basically to pay attention to every single red flag like did she ever have any feelings though did she ever tell you like eh, this kind of rubs me the wrong way that well, she, I mean, she said that he did feel like he's getting a little clingy and stuff like that and when i said that you know he feels like he's gonna be kind of like all consuming and, and smothering and she kind of lasted yeah i could see that like uh you know like, mm. so, like she could already see that being an issue but instead of saying that's a red flag for me. That's a, that's a violation of my boundaries. That's like, you know, that's something I need you to step the fuck back and push back on it. She just kind of was like, okay, not that it's her fault, obviously, because, you know, the, the, he still held back all the, you know, really bad stuff until they were together. But, but like, I, I think that when you see these little things, you have to listen to your gut. And if it bothers you, it, you have to, you have to push back because if she had pushed back and set boundaries, like actually hard boundaries way back then, he would have been gone way either before. Would have been gone, or he might have reacted really negatively or aggressively, and then she would have been like, "Oh shit, this is who you really are," and then she wouldn't have wasted her time with him, you know. And I think that that's we see these little red flags, and when we call the little red flags out, then you really see the bigger flags that, that are that are hit, a little more hidden. Um, and just the fact that he lied about being Polly. Like I mean, that, you that don't know. Be... I mean, I'm I'm assuming no, that he, he, lied, he lied, right? But like. I mean, why, if he was happy being Polly and was happy, you know, had this happy Polly life and just wanted her to be a new part of his life and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, as soon as she was willing to be part of it, be like, okay, let's be monogamous. The, the only, but like, why, why would he, I mean, why would he say that in the first place? Just because he's a shithead, basically. Because it, it allows he's trying to manipulate. To, yeah, it allows them to, to open up their their boundaries a little more to be like, oh, because women who are like maybe not ready to date or commit are going to be more willing to date someone who they think is Polly because, Oh, you have your own life and you have your own uh, other things beyond me. So I'm not going to be the sole focus of your existence, which makes my life easier. I don't have to worry about that. Fortunately, he wasn't showing that though, because he wanted to be by her at every little thing. So, I mean, yeah, that was the telltale sign that he wasn't really, I mean, I hate to like assume someone is Polly or not Polly or whatever, but he was being clingy in the fact that, and then yeah. we're going to just say he was lying. I mean, I, maybe not. Maybe there was, he had some oh, huge awakening and was like, I just don't want to be Polly anymore. I want to be monogamous, you know, and, and then it could be yes. And then, and then immediately, but, but also based on the jealousy that he, that, that I heard that he exhibited towards her when, uh, and, and the, and the jealousy he projected onto her that he would be like, Oh, well, you were jealous about this, just about this when she wasn't, uh, it tells me that if he was actually Polly, he probably was a really toxic Polly person. If he couldn't handle like, having outside friendships and things like that. Yeah, so you're probably thing, right. I don't know, but I, but I think it just boils down to being 
able to find and see those red flags in the beginning and not dismiss them as like, oh, that's a that's a yellow flag or that's a small red flag. Or things are good. It's fine. I'm not yeah. concerned about that until you are concerned about well, it. Until, yeah, it's just it, it, anytime you see any, like a, a red flag, it has to stop. It doesn't like it doesn't matter. You just you, I think that you save yourself so much hassle when you stop as soon as you see any of those things that might have the the, the, the just the, the tiniest the tiniest of things are okay to end or end something on before it even begins it's acceptable you're not doing anything wrong you don't owe every i guess the important thing is you don't owe everyone a chance right you know not everybody deserves a chance to try to prove that they're worth your time as soon as they show something that shows that they're not in any way you're okay to step away from it and you should feel comfortable doing that agreed so anyway just want to talk about that because i feel like it was just it's worth almost like a, a little bit of a life lesson from that. Um, so, uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, hanging out the with better a, little, a little BLT and seeing, uh, you know, we're going to go get some BLTs when I'm in Florida. So that'll be fun. Nice. I was going to say, isn't the better part of the story, the the fact that he said, D- don't talk, I don't give you my consent to talk about it on the podcast. Oh, that's, that's right. Yes, yes. Yes. So he's so concerned about us talking about this, that this is another Fuck reason you. That I want to talk about <laughs> like, the podcast. On. Was that when they were talking to his wife, I don't give you consent to talk about this in the podcast. And I was like, well, you, you know, you didn't, I, I don't give a shit. You know, I'm sorry. There's no name. We didn't here. use your name and we don't yeah. know and her. Could. It's Lil we BLT. very much could. But we're not. Name, but we're not. But we're not. So this is that could be honestly, it could be a lot of people. This story, that's that's the sad thing. That's That's the really sad thing. Uh, That is actually so true that if you just actually took just the meat of the story, it applies to so many shitty men, not just this one shitty dude. Yeah. So, well, with that, talking about (laughs) shitty men violating boundaries, uh, we're We're going to get into it. (laughs) Yeah, no, we're going to take a quick break and we come back. We're going to talk about uh, the topic, which is uh, setting boundaries on dating apps. If you've been a longtime listener of the podcast, you might remember this story. Um, and if you're newer, here's a here's a new story for you. Um, going just to tie into with this topic of breaking boundaries and of ignoring boundaries while on dating apps. I had a previous Bumble experience back in 2019 where someone sent me an email. They saw my Bumble profile, found my website, looked at my social media because all of that was linked, found my email address on my old blog, which they would have had to have scrolled through multiple pages to then get to my email and then emailed me this email with the subject line, an unconventional right swipe. Oh, can I, can I read this? Oh yes, you can read this. Wonderful. Hi, Sarah. (laughs) Okay. I wasn't ready. My my name is Brian. I've never listened to your podcast, but I agree. Dating kind of sucks. Your profile on Bumble piqued my interest in particular that you have a podcast about dating, so I decided I want to figure out that lie. You seem lively enough to have won a company dance competition by twerking, but it also seems feasible that you're allergic to grass. My guess is that you were allergic to grass and did not win the dance competition. Your turn. I'm a certified master scuba diver. I was born in Germany. I've also struggled with acne, scarring, and bad skin. Dating kind of sucks. And I did his name right. Well, I, don't get, right. We, I think we, his we, name was Brian. Yeah. yeah. Brian. I don't know. You his name out, was, was yeah. scratched out on this tweet that I published. But yeah, I think it was Brian. But so he's pulling from my dating profile in this email because it was like two truths and a lie. Yeah. So he wanted to do his own. And instead of matching with me and then doing this exercise, he said, fuck it. An email is better. Well, yeah, yeah, he didn't match. And then, yeah, the fact that he tracked down your fucking email address is just uh, insane because we we tried to do it. Remember, it took a while to actually get to your site. You, you're you like four pages fucking deep in this shit. OK, you're on the Bumble app. You're in my profile. Then you're in my Instagram. Then you click the link in my bio from my Instagram. Then from there, you're on my home page of my website. And then from there, you click into a blog. And then from there, you scroll down to the blog. And then you have, depending on the blog, you happen to see my email address. Well, it was more than that even because he didn't even, you didn't even have, you, you, you didn't even have the name of the podcast. So correct. Yeah. I didn't put dating. And, kind and, of stuff. And so he already saw, he found Instagram. this. So he had to find the podcast first. He went some, you know, serious Googling to even get to your website. And that that like, that takes a lot of effort when you didn't match with somebody to try to track them down. For what? An awkward email and a that didn't email fucking too. work. Yeah, it was a terrible email at the same time too. Like it was, 
it was like it had no awareness but also just the fact that he decided to continue with what the bumble profile like said was just so bad but and then I tweet- that, yeah oh yeah. yeah so i had tweeted out i said if i wanted to talk to this individual on bumble i would have number one swiped right number two made the first move and started the conversation sending an email not to mention he had to dig to find that is so not okay this is the email he sent with what we just read. So I tagged Bumble in that and they responded. I don't know if you remember this story, but they responded and said, you know, this is not OK. We're removing his profile from our platform, blah, blah, blah. They had DM me and I gave them the information. And then after the fact, they sent me flowers to say thank you for keeping our community safe. We really appreciate it bumble and i got some swag out of it so that was nice. that's right they also sent more wasn't they, they sent some actual stuff too right or was it just flowers it was just flowers that go okay, around okay. yeah i know we got bumble swag from that one point so i wasn't sure that's was the same thing um which is good on bumble for doing that and i think you also replied to him too and said that that's not acceptable i really emailed acceptable. it yeah and, i had and, emailed him back and said this is not the right medium again if i would have if i would have been interested in your profile we would be having this conversation on the app but here we're not doing that and you violated a boundary actually had you help me with the email because i was so fucking mad that it happened i was like i'm gonna say something that is gonna be too mean and you're like no 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 let me help you it's not going to be too mean and then sent that email and he never responded after that and then he was off the app yeah yeah exactly um yeah and you you were yeah you were very mad about it and i think that it's also it had a little controversy in our in our facebook group too because some people were saying that they, they didn't understand why it was so bad and so um and what brought this up again so that was four years ago which i can't believe by the way that was four years I know. ago but um it was that recently there's been a big twitter thread going on with this twitter user named kelsey q-u-e-l-s-e-e um where she uh, was talking about um she tweeted that she's uh, she says i'm so fucking angry right now stop finding women you see on dating apps on their personal social media profiles especially if you haven't connected and there are zero identifiers in their profiles um and so she showed screenshots of this guy uh who messaged her on facebook and in like this long and i want to like i want to read what he says just because it's just it's so it's cringy but it's like kelsey i mean uh k okay. shit mayhaps that was a tad overly enthusiastic for a stranger danger message on a sunny friday morning immediately no that those those, those three, three messages already yeah. are those are like, three I... separate messages too not like one message yeah yeah immediately i'm like i don't want to fucking talk to this dude you're insane so then he says, my bad. Let's go with, um, I can explain. Fuck yeah, that works. And then he does a little emoji. And so she finally replies. And, and this is something he did at like 11 in the morning. And she replied, it feels like the next day or something like that. And says, sorry, do I know you? And instead of, I mean, just this guy has no, no shame whatsoever. So then he writes back, oh, hey, no, we don't know each other. Sincere apologies for the subterfuge. If you give me the tiniest bit of room, I'd be happy to explain. I reckon that said explanation will bring laughs and smiles. P.S. Not trying to rope you into a pyramid scheme to sell fancy Tupperware yet. Like, Dude, this-, this guy sounds like a fucking serial. Who sends messages yeah, like this? He really Be does. a normal fucking person. So then he just continues on with like a ridiculous amount of, of messages and then like voice memos after voice memos where he just you know lays mr down personality he's like yeah. oh hey he thinks he's on a fucking talk show sending her these voice memos exactly and so she you know posted this is not okay don't do this etc and sends you know sends a voice memo she posts on twitter and it goes viral and it goes out you know and, and like she, she has his name and he's in um like in, in canada where she is and it starts to turn out that he has done this to over 20 something other women in the same way, like there's some of them are sending screenshots where he does the same thing where he like just yells their name and it was like, oh, wait, that's too enthusiastic. Hey, maybe you'll give me a chance to explain and then sends a bunch of really douchey, obnoxious voice memos. His name's Ryan Andrews, by the way. Um, Stay clear. Oh, uh, yeah. Just make it very, although that's not his real name. Ryan Andrews is the name he has on Facebook. He's got some other name. So Ryan something. He's a musician in um, Mississauga, Ontario. But um, yeah. <laughs> and just goes through this. I'm just putting it out there. So anybody well, I was going to say, throw yeah, yeah. it all out. It's oh yeah, throw it out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, so it's 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 absolutely insane. And so it, it made me think we should like we should we should need to talk about this again. We need to talk about the why we have dating apps. Like what the point of the you know of the boundaries are and and why it's important to, to set those if you want. 
Well, what blows my mind too is that in my scenario and this one, both fucking guys message message and say something about their profile. I was just so intrigued by your profile. You just seem like the girl for me. And wow, I just, I couldn't step away from your profile. And it's like, you were right there. You were so fucking close. You could have just matched with me if I would have been interested, but I fucking wasn't. So it died right there, you know, but you just couldn't let it die. In some ways, this almost ties into that episode we did about um, talking to like women on the street. Like, it's just like, like men have like an entitlement sometimes where they see someone who's attractive and they're like, I'm obsessed with you or your profile. It's amazing. I don't care that you don't have any interest in me or you would have, you know, shown me interest or in person or swiped right or whatever. I'm still going to, I'm still going to bother you and put myself, you know, and bother, put myself into your space because, because I'm in so entitled and I think I have that audacity. I have the audacity to try to do that. Well, it goes back to I'm going to shoot my shot. And so I didn't I didn't I didn't get the yes on the dating app. So this is my last resort to shoot my shot. And I'm going to give it my I mean, him sending Kelsey. I mean, what like that's him thinking that he's shooting his shot correctly. I know. I mean. God, that, that is that's so douchey. Just the, the shouting the thing, and it, it turns but out. But there's not even... a good way to do it because they're not fucking interested in you. No, no matter, even not. if he was to say, "Hey, Kelsey, I ran across your profile. Eh. Hey, Kelsey, um, interested in because ch- eh. she's gonna be like, "Sorry, do I fucking know you?" Every every time she's gonna be like, "Oh," and then you saw me on Bumble and I didn't match. Weird, you're blocked. It, yeah. Every it all whittles down to that. No matter what your intro message is or what great fucking story you think is going on in your mind. Yes. I, I think that's the, that's a good point. Like if you're look, coming to this episode, like as, as a dude thinking to yourself, so what is the right way to approach a woman when you don't match with her and you find her on social media? There is none like that. The, the, there is no right way to do it. If she had wanted to match with you, she would have matched with you. The fact that she didn't is her setting a boundary. So respect it and stay the fuck away. Also, like to go that deep and find someone's, I mean, maybe not in her anyway, to even just go the next layer and then to stalk their profile, obsess over their images or whatever, and then to message them. It's just like there are so many other people on the app that you could just match with and have a conversation with. Right. Why? Yeah. What is it doing for you? Nothing, clearly. And like, and and I'm not going to say that I could almost understand it because I still don't approve of it, but it might almost be reasonable if it was just this one time where he just like had this the, this feeling that there was a connection and and it was just something he had to pursue because blah, blah blah but no this guy's done it 23 different times and shows that he just does this to anyone he doesn't match with you know they're probably all a similar body type and facial type or something that just like clicks with his reptile brain and he doesn't know how to actually be an adult about it um so what do you feel about is someone who has um, like on their, in their profile, if they have their Instagram. You just go on and look at their other photos that they have posted to get a better idea of who they are. But you're probably not looking at those other photos until after you fucking match with that person. Because most of the time there's like the swiping stage of being on the app and you're swiping, you're swiping, you're swiping. And then there's the messaging side where you're like, shit, who did I match with? Let me go back and look at their profile, see what other information I can gather so I can say something interesting and cool like to build a relationship with them via text message so that's what you're using it for is like round two when you've matched probably not the first go around (coughs) excuse me that's how i feel about it too is i think that if they have their social media handle in their in their actual profile like and actively putting it out there it's not for you to reach out if you don't match it's it's for you to if you do match then be like hey can i follow you on your instagram or then to follow them if, if you decide you want right. to um but it is not to replace the dating app the dating app is still that boundary there's still a gate around it the social media is just like she's like well here's here's a little bit more about me um and, and it's okay to, to to look at that because she put the information out there specifically for people to look at it still doesn't open the door for you to reach out and try to talk to them i agree so i know I didn't, we haven't talked about this one in a while, but then there was like, there's the element of someone made a TikTok saying so-and-so, maybe her name's not Kelsey, but let's just say, Kelsey, I saw your hinge profile oh, yeah. and I'd want to, ma- I want to match with you. Like this message is for Kelsey, please contact me. And this isn't in this scenario, but like in this example yeah. of that Kelsey, you know what I mean? But those, those TikToks have existed as well. And people are like, oh, this is such a 
admirable thing to do. Like, it's a sign of love. He's really interested in her. And it goes back to she's not fucking asking for him to make a TikTok about her. If she was interested, she would have matched with your ass on Hinge or whatever other app. Don't make a TikTok saying, I really want to match with you and get to know you more. How about if she wants to match with you, she will. Right. I mean, men, men will just go ahead and, and <laughs> risk women's lives just to uh, just to get a match. You know, like that's the thing is, is if by putting that out there, he put her photos, he put her information, her location out to I mean, that 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 one, the one of those TikToks that, you know, gets got millions of views and all these comments of people saying it's romantic. And I remember a comment again saying, no, this is stalking and this is dangerous. Like you just you just put her life at risk, not because you're dangerous, but because now all these other people are going to try to find her. Now you just you just put a whole bunch of random people trying to find the personal information of a stranger, uh, like a strange woman, and and that's that's not safe and that's not okay. And it's the fact that people don't see that boundary is just it mind blowing. Oh, I agree. It's not that dating apps are a safe space in every case, but no. like they, if you're getting back into dating and you want to feel comfortable in that space. Knowing that people do that shit makes you not want to be on the apps in general because you're just like, I can't even keep it here in the one spot where it should fucking be. Exactly. I think that it's one of those things that, you know, you can go on a dating app and you can be relatively safe. Like you could use a different first name. You can use, yeah. Um, you know, you can have photos that don't have any identifiers of where you are. You can turn on, you know, you can hide your location, you know, and, and all of these little things. And you don't put any personal information that has like your work or anything like that. So you can set up enough roadblocks that most people will be able to find you but if these men think that they're entitled to try to track you down and that that makes dating apps just not safe for, for women and that's not that's not you know the whole goal is to try to here set up a, a like a fair middle ground that if you decide you don't want to, you don't want to talk to somebody you don't swipe on them or if you match with them and they end up being shitty you can unmatch them and block them or whatever and you're not opening yourself up to further communication from them. But so when men think that they have the the right to pursue that and be like, let me just, well, oh, there's a boundary. Let me just go ahead and break through that. And I'm going to reach out to you no matter what. It's, it's a huge red flag. Like that's, that's, that's a sign that that person does not respect boundaries uh, in real life as well. Yeah, I agree. Now I will say I have done this. I've been the shitty person on the other end back in 2018, before we ever covered this topic, uh -huh. I, I, d I don't know if you remember this or not because I still feel really bad about it. Like now I'm like, I know better I now, this. but this was like early on dating in Nashville. And this guy who was one of like the main characters in the Broadway touring show Wicked, he came across my Bumble profile and he was dressed as the character that he plays in the in the right, play. Right. And I was like, holy fuck, <clears throat> that's amazing. So I swiped right. We didn't match, but he had his. I did the same thing. He had his, you know, Instagram, whatever linked. And so I DM'd him on Instagram. I was like, I saw your show the other night. Like, ha ha. I saw you on Bumble too. And he didn't respond. I didn't think that was creepy, but now like I look back at that. And I'm just like, Sarah, what the fuck were you like? Did wrong? you actually see the show too? I did. I literally saw the show the night before I saw him on the app. So I was like, Oh, interesting. Like I literally saw you perform last night, but that's not, for you know, me yeah, to, yeah i mean you know I, what i mean i don't think that's as bad um and i, I mean no that, no it's not but it's still but... weird it's still like unsolicited like message where like i would have only found his instagram information like i wasn't seeking his instagram out after right, the show right. i only saw it because of the profile right well because then you knew he was single too so then it was just like a little more exactly cute. but like it, let's say let's take the bumble thing out of it if you had just seen him on uh, at the show and then saw his instagram and followed his instagram because you thought you know, like you decided to follow, you know, find him on Instagram and then send him a message saying, hey, I just saw your show. It was great. But and I but I wouldn't have said that I because it was like a date. You know, it was the like you're single. I'm single. You're hot. I wanted to swipe it like my intentions sure. would have been different. I might have just said great performance last night. Like I, yeah. I was there last night versus like I saw your performance and I saw you're single, too. Like we're both on Bumble. Ha ha ha. Like hinting at. And did you send 16 messages with voice memos, too? I, no, I'm not that bad, but still, like, it, it's the principle of, like, I did do this as well years yeah. ago, and then what happened a year later, shit happened to me, and I'm just like, I know better now, you know, like, right. that. don't do that. Keep it on the app or don't, you know, yes. don't message. I mean, I, I agree, and I, and I definitely think that, and, and I, I mean, I've done it, too. It's not like, I think most people have probably done it at some point in their life, they try to look somebody else up that they didn't match with, you know, um, and, and so I, I think it's, but it, when it, when it when it's the other way around, it's a little bit less. I mean, there's less danger 
uh, for a woman tracking down a man and then messaging him. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, website. it wasn't. It, it just you have less to consider. I think that men have to sometimes consider that what they're doing is is uh, it can be a risk to a woman, uh, like a, a physical risk, and that's something that that's why it makes it a little bit worse too. Totally Beyond, agreed. But both sides of the coin, it's not you shouldn't yeah. do it. Like of man course, or of woman, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do, do it. Yeah. Um, and I've had it done to me a lot uh, as well, and like a lot. But I also think it's because when you are more of a and i hate this phrase public more, figure yeah. you're so yes. famous you have a lot of tiktok well, well that's what I'm saying. yeah and it's but it's and it's not it's a but it's a mile on a mild level but on that level especially in, like when you're in a say when i was like in orlando where everybody you know like knew me it was easier for people to find me as soon as if they didn't match with me they could track me down and i think when you're a public figure when you're out there and you're in the arts like like he was too it's a little bit more I don't want to say acceptable, but more um, accepted that it will happen. You know, that, that people will reach out like that. Yeah. Doesn't make it right. No, but... Doesn't make it right. but I mean, I was, I was really bad. And, and I don't think I've ever told this on here, but I had a, I had someone that I matched with when I was like, just uh, traveling up and down doing comedy and was, or no, no, didn't match with, it was really intrigued by it, by her. Did we, I'm trying to remember if we actually ended up matching and then, she deleted, deleted the app or something like that, but I had enough information that I found her. Um, and she had really tried to be like, she'd really put very little information in there, but like, it just, it, I mean, it took me like 30 seconds on Google and I found her and I think I might've, might've added her on Facebook and actually added her and sent her a message that said that I had seen her profile, that I was, you know, comedian touring and I uh, just thought that she, you know, she seemed like uh, someone cool. And, uh, you know, I was just trying to make friends as I traveled up and down the coast. And then we be, end up becoming friends. But yeah. So, I mean, I've done it too. And that was totally unacceptable, you know? And then the fact right. that we, the fact that I had no inclinations beyond that and we've stayed friends since and everything doesn't matter, you know, that was a rare, rare situation, but it, you know, it's, it's, it, it's easy to sometimes get uh, not obsessed, but get to a level where you're like, Oh, I really want to know this person and then get really disappointed when it doesn't happen. But it's still unacceptable behavior. Just because it's online in another form doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Because yeah. it, it's easy to say, like, well, I know that they're like in my instance, like it's like, well, I know that he's single. I know that, like his Instagram now, and I know like he came up on my profile, so I probably came up on his when he was swiping. So let's just cut to the chase right now and just it's just fun. It's nothing that serious, and you never think anything dangerous or like. <sighs> ill will i don't like even these stupid fucking messages from this guy ryan right like yeah they don't come across immediately as dangerous they come across as weird and i don't want to talk to you but right. it's not like threatening it's just kind of like oh fun let's get to know each other it's dating and so like i think it's easy to think it's okay because it's just like a friendly conversation because other people probably randomly dm you all the time with they see your Instagram story and they DM you about something, you know? So it's like, yeah. this is the same thing, but it's not because they're literal fucking strangers yes. that were intended to just be on a dating app. And I think those boundaries too are dating apps are for dating. Social media apps are for social media. They're not for dating. So it also, uh, you know, if, if you see someone's social media profile and you, you know, try not to send them a thirsty DM either, you know, either. Yeah. That's not, <laughs> that's sir, not this a, is LinkedIn, yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. LinkedIn, whatever, like just Instagram sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll post some reels of content or whatever, and then I'll have people add me and then send me messages and, you know, oh, I like your content. Thank you so much. And then it goes into a, well, where do you live? Because I really think it would be like, would, I think it would really get along if I was in your area and everything. And, you know, we could go on a date and, and things. And I'm like, it's just. And like, I, well, I appreciate it, but you know, I'm, I'm not on, you know, I'm not on Instagram to, to date. And, and I think that we need to keep those boundaries in mind to just have respect for people's, you know, rights to do what the fuck they want on, on different apps. I agree with you. I think that's a, a really good pushback for, especially like Instagram or TikTok or whatever other social platform you use pretty frequently, because that when people know and they check your profile and they know you're single, it's a lot easier for them to want to slide into your DMs because they're like, well, she's she's not dating anyone else. So, I mean, right. I'm doing her a fucking I mean, maybe they're not saying that, but my mind goes to I'm doing her a fucking favor and giving her, you know, some attention and right. let's see you where this I goes. Instead you know, of like, this a lot is of my them job. That do, that, do think that actually they, they think oh, I'm doing her a favor. She, she needs some attention from yeah. me. But yeah. I think that's a good point. Like, even if you're not an Instagram influencer and you're just using it randomly to post things about your life, which is normal. 
saying like, no, sir, this is not what I'm using this platform for. Yes. I'm yeah, not absolutely. asking for this DM. So, you know, and, and I think it, it, if you're having trouble kind of visualizing this, think about it like meeting someone in person. Like if you walked up to a woman in person and she immediately screamed in your face, no, um, that is the equivalent of her not swiping right on you. And so if someone were to do that, would you then try to track them on Instagram and be like, hey, so you scream no in my face, but you know, I thought I would introduce <laughs> myself anyways. I'm going to give it another shot here. I'm going to give it another shot. That's the equivalent of someone not swiping right on you in a dating app and then you deciding to reach out through other social media, except it's even creepier because it's like you showed up in their apartment and it was like, hey, hey you remember me I'm from here down, again. down the street earlier? Yeah, well, I just, you know, I wasn't sure what you meant by the no. So I decided to come back up and uh, talk to you some more. I think yeah. you're really pretty. So yeah. that should count for something. <laughs> That's right. My opinion means more than yours, even if you don't like me at all. So, uh, yeah. So just stick to the app. Just stick. God damn it. Stick to just the app that you're using on. That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, And I think that I know there's going to be people who have good stories like, oh, well, this is how I met somebody because of this and everything. And there are always exceptions to the rule. There are always exceptions to the rule. It doesn't mean that it was not a violation of boundaries in the first place. You know, like people can, because it is a more accidental violation of, I mean, it's intentional, but it's also, you don't, people don't necessarily see it as a violation of boundaries. And so I think it's something to see, you need to see as that, but if you don't see it as that and you stumble across someone's boundaries and you do that and then it turns out to work out okay in the long run that doesn't mean it wasn't a violation in the first place and i think that's very important to keep in mind yeah you can still have a good outcome with it but it's no, it's still a violation yeah absolutely yeah. i think that's why people ignore this like this entire topic because it's like well it could be <laughs> you shoot your shot and it could work out even though yeah exactly but most times it doesn't work out. And most times, I mean, let's be honest too. Most times when the guy reaches out through Facebook Messenger or whatever the fuck other platform, the girl doesn't screenshot his messages and the tweet doesn't go viral on Twitter, you know? That's true. It's just but someone it talks about it. Honestly, it should like, my, not that I'm saying I want my shit to go viral, but like mine was just like, I tweeted about it. It got like two likes, five views, and then Bumble saw it. There was one of the five and I got flowers out of it and he was removed, which is still better than nothing. But it's like, if people don't talk about it, we won't fucking know that it's still happening. Like it's wild to me that my incident happened in 2019 and this viral incident literally just fucking happened in 2023. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's been doing it for years and nobody's like called him out on it. Hopefully they will now. I think they'll, that's gone viral enough that I think there've been whole articles written about him. Um, and he, since he's like a musician performing publicly, like people have been writing about him publicly. So fuck yeah, your tour, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, if his music is anything like his, his comedy, his, uh, his, you know, material that he, uh, talks about, uh, then, then I, I don't think he has a career. So Kelsey, uh, Adam, you know, what the fuck? So annoying. So fucking. For, I know. Anyways. Um, yes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, with that, um, let's uh, let's hear your. We always want your input. Once again, you can call the DKS hotline with any feedback you might have at four zero seven five one nine zero one eight one. You can also email us at dating kind of sucks podcast at gmail dot com or uh, you know message us on uh, Instagram at dating kind of sucks. And you can watch every YouTube episode we have, what to see is, and the full length episodes at youtube.com slash dating kind of sucks. You can also follow Adam. He's the famous one on TikTok. Don't DM him though, at Adam Avitable, or you can find me and my five other followers on my TikTok <laughs> at simply Sarah G underscore. <laughs> Be sure if you do listen and you haven't already followed us on Spotify, give us a follow on there and rate the podcast on the app. And join our Facebook group as well to talk more about this topic. Maybe we'll get some more controversy in our group this go around too. That is facebook.com slash groups slash DKS podcast. Absolutely. And if you enjoy the podcast, you want to support us for $5 a month, you can support us at Patreon at patreon.com slash DKS podcast, where we have bonus episodes at least once a month. Um, and I think one of the bonuses I think I'm, I might just do, and I, I'm just telling Sarah this for the first time, is um, the live episode might get uploaded to Patreon. Love that. Um, early, so you get it, you get it early, and, and just instead of uh, waiting the two weeks for it, so that might be your bonus episode this week because I don't know if we're going to have one otherwise with trying to prepare for this. So something crazy happens at the hotel, and you turn on your camera, <laughs> you record something. You're like, and here's Sarah being an idiot. <laughs> 
Um, well, uh, with that, um, I think we will be back in, so we'll be back in two weeks with our live episode and then two weeks after that with the other episodes. And, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll be on the road if anyone wants to reach out and convince me to meet them somewhere. Don't, oh my fucking God, don't beg him to no, meet don't up. Don't beg me. No, please don't know. But if someone's like, Hey, I'm going to be in town. I will, I will meet you. I'll make the effort. I promise. I'm not that He's much a nice a, guy. No, <laughs> I'm not that much of a grumpy man <laughs> until next time. <laughs> Whether you're married or single or poly or ace Or hanging out with swingers back at your place Listen to us as we get no luck On Tinder and Bumble and plenty of yucks Trying and trying and having no luck Because we all know Dating kinda sucks Are two of a kind. He says stupid shit and she doesn't mind. They're not doing this show to make any bucks. Life is a chicken whose feathers they pluck. Why does it work? Well, here is the crux. They both know.